Richard Fuller. Thank you very much. Madam Deputy Speaker, it's uh, helpful for me to break this budget down into three separate budgets, the coronavirus emergency budget, the current expenditure budget, and the strategic investment budget. On the first of those those budgets, uh, for me, the test is, did the Chancellor announce uh, a sufficient range of measures and investment? And he started quite rightly by saying that the NHS will get all the money that it deserves and needs. And that was on top of uh, confirming in the budget the commitments the government has already said that it will provide in terms of finance for the NHS, and his later statement in the budget uh, suggesting additional funding for the NHS. NHS, NHS, NHS was a core message of this budget, and I'm sure will be a core message of all Conservative budgets over the next four or five years. But in addition to that, the Chancellor announced much needed support for our small businesses. I'm delighted, having last week gone with the Federation of Small Businesses to meet a couple of businesses, including the number one King Street Cafe in Potton, where they said we need help with our rates, that the Chancellor focused on getting money directly into the hands of small businesses. Yes, we need banks to assist. It's right to do that. But one of the lessons from 2007-2008 was you can't rely on the banks alone to support the economy. And so my first challenge and question to my friend, uh, the Chief Secretary of Treasury, is will he make sure that over the next few weeks and months he looks at all of those arteries in the financial system that can get money directly into the hands of our small businesses? And will he particularly look at one omission in that rates relief which is that childminders and nurseries were not included in the list. And childminders and nurseries, like the one in my constituency run by Debbie Moliterno, are needing that relief uh, because of the pressure of the coronavirus emergency in our economy. Madam Deputy, the second budget is the current expenditure budget. And here, one of the messages I would say is, in that budget, uh, are we working in a way that is prudent? And the... IFS says that there will be a £12 billion uh, headroom in the current budget. Uh, I am more conserved to that. I think there's too much uncertainty around. Uh, in the budget, there were some taxation inc- uh, increases mentioned, but I think we have to understand that there may well need to be additional taxes uh, later this year. Uh, my point to my friend, the, uh, uh, the Chief Secretary, is We need in that effort to do all we can to support the wealth-creating part of our economy, and that is the small businesses that we have. It's the entrepreneurs that we have. And with the issues, and uh, my friend knows that next week we'll be having a specific debate on the loan charge, and I I met constituents affected by that last week. We also have uh, the issues with IR35, where the HMRC is is acting like the reverse of Jean-Baptiste Colbert's Uh, principle of of taxation, which is getting as much hissing out of a goose for the littlest amount of tax as it is possible to imagine. Eighteen years of collective failure by the HMRC. Please, Chief Secretary, do not be the fall guy for the HMRC's blatant, poor execution of this policy on treating our entrepreneurs. Uh, And in the third part of the budget, it is the strategic budget uh, that we have, the strategic investment budget. Hidden away in that is the ambitions this government has for raising the wages and incomes of the poorest paid workers. This government should be proud of its record over the last few years in raising the living wage and raising wages on poorest workers in our community. When the last Labour government was in office in the OECD, we were 17th, Madam Deputy Speaker, 17th in that list in terms of the ratio of our minimum wage to median earnings. Now, in 2018-2019, Uh, We were ninth, and the Chancellor has indicated that we have further to go. This is an ambition that is not matched by any other major economy in the OECD, and it's right for that to be part of the strategic ambitions of our government. But we also need uh, to recognise, for my fiscally conservative colleagues, that this is a time for investment. Some other speakers have mentioned that it's unusual for us to have an 80% uh, debt-to-GDP ratio. Uh, That is true if one has a perspective of the last 20 or 30 years. But if you look back over these 20 years and the 100 years of the past century, from 1917, Madam Deputy, 1917 to 1966, this country managed and maintained a debt-to-GDP ratio of 80% or above. So it is unusual in a near-term context for the lives of, I think, nearly all of the honourable members here today. But in a broader context, this is something with the right principle and purposes, even fiscally conservative uh, members of Parliament, such as myself, can, uh, can sustain. 
And we need it because this is the first budget since we left the European Union. We need to make sure that we have a scale of ambition that meets the opportunities for our nation. We need to make sure that we have got rid of all of the obstacles in the way of the government's policies to take hold of the opportunities that we uh, have in place so that this country can really set a momentum in the direction of change that is important. And my final point to my friend, the Chief Secretary, in terms of how this return on that investment will be judged, will be to say, don't get hooked on a single objective, like the increase in productivity rate for this country, because there are other significant challenges that we have. We have not only the challenge of productivity, we have the challenge of meeting the carbon ambitions of our economy. We are facing radical changes in our economy, the fundamental basis of our economy, the fund fundamental basis of our trade. And to tie ourselves to a single point of, of uh, uh, accountability, I think, would be incorrect. Margaret Ferrier. Madam Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to start off by congratulating all new uh, honourable members for their excellent maiden speeches. This budget is clearly set in the backdrop of